Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I wanted to do a video, pretty short video, I think, that would go over problem number two on related rates. And I saw that most people did okay on problem number one, and most people did okay with the last problem, but this one was the one where uh, people were a little bit shaky on it, and I wanted to go through it. Um, you know, I think most people did it okay, but there were still a few that that weren't doing those, uh, didn't kind of missed the mark a little bit. I wanted to go through it just to, to show how to handle this problem. So we're going to go through some first order linear differential equations as how to solve this particular problem. Yeah. All right, so we got problem number two. Again, it's a mixing problem. You have a tank with 200 gallons of brine. You know, so the total volume is 200 gallons. And in that brine, 40 pounds of salt, right? So that's what makes it a brine. So 200 gallons, somebody dumped 400 pounds of salt into it. So that's our initial concentration in the tank. And we have a concentration going in at four gallons per minute. And in that concentration is two pounds of salt for every gallon. You know, so a pound, so a gallon goes through the system and you get two pounds of salt with dissolved into it. So wherever the source is, it's two pounds of salt per gallon going through this, this pump. And it's the solution that we don't know because we've got a brine and we've got a solution coming in that leaves the tank at four gallons per minute. You know, so the same rate going in, same rate going out, and the volume is going to stay constant. We don't know what's leaving because it's constantly changing. You know, we don't even know whether it's going up or down as of yet, but we can figure that out. You know, so you can figure out whether it should be going up or down. And from there you can, uh, you know, you do know that the volume is constant, like I said, and we know what's going in. So again, so we got all the, the givens of the problem. Let's uh, go ahead and start working this one through. You know, oh, the question is how much salt is in the tank after one hour? All right, so we got one hour. We want to see how much this is going to change. So what we have going in, in the concentration rate going in, you've got two pounds for every gallon of salt going in, and it's going in at a rate of four gallons per minute. The gallons cancel, and you've got eight pounds per minute. So that's the rate of the salt going in. So what's coming out? Again, we just call this a variable A at any time T. So we've got A over 200 gallons, and that's the salt that's going in. And it's got a rate, four gallons per minute. So again, the gallons cancel. You know, you've got four over in the 200, which comes to 50. So you've got some amount of salt is leaving every minute. And again, this is a function we know that's going to be constantly changing. So now let's look at this and put this into the, the typical differential equation. You know, the rate of change of the salt is equal to the difference of what's going in versus what's going out. You know, rate of change of that tank is going to be the eight pounds per minute going in minus what's exiting. So that comes into a sub t divided by pounds per minute, 50 pounds per 50 minutes. So we've got a differential equation. Let's put it into standard form. And this standard form is going to be for a first order linear differential equation. So that means we're going to be adding this term to both sides. So now it's in standard form. You know, do you a over dt plus p of x times a of t is equal to, and in this case is eight. So that does fit the standard form of a linear differential equation. And we know that this is p of x, or we'll call it p of a in this particular case, but that's what would represent normally p of x. And we know what we do with p of x, we use that to get the integrating factor. And we use that integrating factor to solve the differential equation. So we got the integrating factor. We've got our equation for the integrating factor. So P of A is one over 50. The equation for the integrating factor is E raised to the integral of P of X dt. In this case, 150th 
dt. And since 1 50th is a constant, it comes outside the infinite sum. And the derivative of time is just t. So the integrating factor is e raised to t over 50. So the next step of solving a first order linear is multiplying through by the integrating factor. So we multiply this equation by the integrating factor. And we end up with equal to 8 times the integrating factor. 8 times e to the t over 50. You know, and every other term is multiplied through. So again, remember the product rule for the integrating factor. Yeah, this is how we're solving this differential equation, which makes it a lot easier to solve. So again, the differential equation becomes, you know, the substitution becomes the integrating factor times a. So we got our equation. So do that, uh, undo the product rule, the integrating factor times a, which is the derivative, equals to 8e to the t over 50. So we integrate both sides of this equation, which is going to be a fairly simple. We're just going to take the antiderivative of a derivative, which is just e to the t over 50 times a. You know, how much salt is there? You know, and the antiderivative of this is going to be, you know, 8 comes out of the, it's a constant, comes out of the infinite sum. And then we've got our rules for integrating base e, you know, and you should remember that and you can go back and review that one. You know, so it's just this uh, 50, the constant becomes a coefficient. So again, you undid the infinite sum or infinite sum, you know, the antiderivative of a derivative on this side, eight comes out as a constant. And then this 50 becomes a coefficient or as to, becomes a coefficient. And then you got plus C. All right, and we multiply that both together, of course. All right, so this is our our solution to our differential equation, which can be simplified a bit. But I'm going to leave it in this form for right now. So we got a general solution. All right, so we got a general solution. This you know this will go to 400. So we got a constant of integration. So it's not a model yet. You know, it's not a model. We got to solve for that constant of integration. But we do have an initial value. Remember at time zero, there was 40 pounds of salt in that tank. So that's our initial condition. All right, so we got our initial condition at time zero, it was 40 pounds of salt. So let's go ahead and do some substitution and solve for a constant of integration. So at 40 pounds at time zero, and we go through this again, subtract uh, 400 from both sides. You end up with a negative 360 for a constant of integration. Again, this just goes to 1, and you know, so it equals to C. So that just goes, the term goes to 1. So 40 minus 400 is equal to a negative 360. So now we got a particular solution, also known as our mathematical model. At any times, T, the amount of salt in that tank at any given time T is equal to 400 minus 360 times E raised to the negative T over 50. Right. And okay, I just want to make sure I clarify one thing. Why is it a negative? Basically, what we've done is we divided both sides by E. All right, so that's where we got that, that negative. Okay, so now what happens at 60? All right, so what happens at 60 minutes? We substitute that in our time. So the amount of salt at 60 minutes is equal to 400 minus 360 times E raised to the 60 over 50, negative 60 over 50. And we end up with 291, almost 202 pounds per salt, 291.6 pounds per salt. You know, in a lot of these equations, you know, these these models are very ideal. You know, can 291 pounds of salt stay in solution that long? No, this will most likely turn into some sort of a sludge. So there is a drop off point. Like I said, these models are, are based around theoretical ideals. So if it could hold that in solution, that's how much it would be. So we can graph that. 
and we end up seeing that we are going through an increasing amount of salt into that solution. So you can go and look up and see how much solution can actually be held in salt at, say, at room temperature. And you can see how true that model actually can be. Otherwise, you'll start to notice the amount of salt will actually fall out of solution. But this is the theoretical answer. That's the answer that we have as far as what this function can do. So go through this. You know, make sure you've followed all these rules. If you didn't get this problem correct, particularly here where you're actually dividing by the integrating factor to solve for explicitly in terms of the amount of salt A. Again, what you'd end up with is canceling the integrating factor off of that term. And since you're dividing C by the integrating factor, you end up with a negative uh, T over C. So that would actually be C divided by the integrating factor. So that's where the negative comes from. Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, I'll see you in the next, you know, in our next section.